every bowling man must be aware of the phrase commercial medicalization. And at the end of this video, you're going to know exactly what that term means. Male baldness is physically benign, though it is increasingly described as a disease. Baldness, also known as androgenic alopecia, typically refers to the common occurrence of loss of hair among men, right? Let's just get the basics out there. That is not caused by an illness. Ask yourself, where does the pain come from? when going bald. Male pattern baldness does not even remotely hurt physically. It's also not shown to be physically harmful look or life limiting. Here we go, look, nonetheless, it is medicalized where it is transformed into a disease largely on the premise that it is profoundly psychologically distressing. The disease status of baldness can then be used to promote commercial interventions okay including of course pharmaceuticals take your pills right surgery wigs or other related products as medical treatments of the 37 studies that they looked they looked at 29 of them okay aka 78 percent likely had explicit conflicts of interest in that their funding or incentives were provided by a company who profited from the sale of baldness products who was recruited for these studies and it was found that 68 percent were recruited participants who were explicitly seeking or undergoing interventions for baldness so these guys were already in search of these medical interventions therefore these participants were more likely to be baldness distressed than other bald men who are not taking part in the study and we're going to get more into that in a moment the disease framing, this is the key point here, guys, the disease framing of baldness. Just three of the studies had an explicit acknowledgement that baldness was not a disease. When more medicalized or specific terms were deployed, individuals were more favorable to invasive diagnosis or interventions and rated the condition as more severe and experienced more anxiety, more distress, right? So if you go in, you're like, right, how do I do deal with this building with this bonus? And then you've got all these doctors, all these studies, all this stuff, and like, mate, this disease, needing medical intervention disease, you know, you're going to be like, oh no, what's wrong with me? I've got this disease. It's scary, to be honest. It's scary, right, how far this has come. So commercial interventions might themselves induce poor quality of life. Of the studies that made an intervention recommendation, 96% of those recommended commercial interventions, right? Yet only one study recommended psychological interventions. This is just something to, to ponder on at this stage. Bold men should be offered a menu of responses, right? Including not intervening, accepting, okay, dare I say it, just going bald. A medical professional who himself is bald, okay, this guy, he said, certainly the safest and least invasive way to address the psychological impact of baldness is through psychological counselling. This might include psychosocial interventions to promote appearance acceptance. Let's get on to the crux of the matter here, guys. It is possible that the medicalization of baldness itself causes distress rather than baldness per se. So what we're pondering here the distress that we feel when we're losing our hair has come from or is coming from now this direct medicalization of the condition. OK, so the more it's portrayed as a disease, the more it's portrayed as this life threatening thing, the distress grows. Kranz found that balding men who did not seek commercial interventions for their baldness were statistically less distressed than those who did. Interesting. Let's move on to another study from this guy here, Kevin Harvey. And what he did is he assessed, okay, he analyzed hair loss websites. This study conducts a critical multimodal discourse analysis of commercial hair loss websites. Okay, so when you type in hair loss, how to deal with male pattern baldness, think of those typical websites that come up. The findings of the study suggest that these promotional discourses play a role in transforming ordinary benign ailments into illnesses, reconfiguring them 
as treatable disorders for commercial gain. These sites actively portray something that is, or at least was, a benign ailment. Okay, reframe it as this life ending disease, but it's treatable, right? You've got this disease, but wait, it's treatable, and I'm going to sell you the treatment. Ponder on that, my friend. He analyzed the images and text of eight popular hair loss pharmaceutical solution websites, and he found four main ways in which the websites talk about male hair loss, okay? Negatively painting the balding man as sad, lonely, and unloved, okay? This again, promoting the attractiveness and self-assurance of the hair suit man. The third way, situating male hair loss in a scientific discourse, right? We've already spoken about that, but using all these sort of scientific, medical, disease-ridden terms to sort of basically make it seem more scary and encouraging consumers to self-evaluate their own hair loss. What's particularly scary, he writes, is that these hair loss websites look like they're offering support to men, but then often are funded by commercial hair loss companies. So when men think they are being offered support, or reading a neutral research paper, they're actually being given a hard sell. It's, this is a key point here, guys. It's exploitative and very shameful. We're not finished yet. When balding became a disease. Baldness, medicalization. More specifically, it transformed an ordinary bodily change common for most men. And it's been transformed into a devastating disease that requires anti-baldness drugs, transplants, and other treatments. And you see all these companies on Instagram, oh yeah, we're ending the stigma. If you really wanted to end the stigma, you would just put out an advert that said, you know what lads, to be honest, like, yeah, you're losing your hair, you're being confronted with the aging process, death, change, all these things that humans struggle to deal with regardless of the, the change, yeah? And losing your hair just happens to be for a majority of men the first thing that you kind of come up against and the first thing that confronts you with this uncomfortable change but in all reality lads it's not going to kill you yeah it doesn't affect your health in any way you can live just as long as the next man who doesn't lose his hair or loses hair as soon as you or in the same pattern as you to be honest you can still live a great life do everything you want the physical aspect of losing your hair doesn't have you stuck indoors. It doesn't stop you chatting to women. It doesn't stop you doing anything. It's up here that stops you doing those things, okay? So just get out there. This is so normal, it's fine. If you really wanted to end the stigma, you'd do that, mate. Legit. Bowling is really common. You know, if it's so common and so normal and it doesn't affect your health or your life, physically in any way then why is it alarming good question and it says here look historically balding was treated with neurality neutral just a regular part of being a man regular part of daily life and it said here balding men had also historically been idolized in art okay chuck up my little plato rendition here that look there at one point caused no alarm among these men okay and there is plenty of other historical evidence to challenge the claim that baldness is alarming balding was seen very differently to how it is today okay i think that's the key point here there wasn't all of this disease scaremongering stuff that we see today okay that's the key point here but at some point baldness became alarming advertising and mass media and we can see here look we've spoken about these despair 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 remember that advert don't wait till this happens to you the mass marketing of anti-boldness products in the 20th century has completely changed how boldness was and how boldness is seen it's transformed the perception of boldness from a benign aesthetic to a disadvantageous disease in need of cure and it goes back to Kevin Harvey's thing, study here, which showed that anti-boldness adverts 
uh, characterized haired men as attractive, successful, and happy. And in contrast, the same adverts promoted the claim that baldness was a disease that severely distressed and disadvantaged men. Renaxil, right, an anti-baldness shampoo, depicted hair follicles on the verge of suicide, but the Renaxil bottles are shown extending a hand to save them. Right here, look. Okay. This is just a, an image of how this has kind of changed through commercialism, right? Selling things now, there's things to sell. The perfect things to sell as well. You know, something that you get hooked on, relied on, your savior. It's being hammered into us, men, that this is a disease. As men watching this, who all are experiencing male pattern baldness, no matter how you're dealing with it, you can make your own conclusions. Please do. Check these things out for yourself. Dig into the research. We're not talking about how effective this medication is or these treatments. No. We're talking about how male pattern baldness, this thing that affects all of us guys watching this video, has been made into this hideous, life-changing, uh, life-destroying disease that begs for treatment. And it's been made into that by the very people that are selling you these treatments. 5,000 images of men in popular magazines. They found just 8% were balding. And we know that the real true percentage is so much higher than that, right? In the real world. Go to any football match. Go to any beach at just how prevalent hair loss in men, male pattern baldness is. You will be gobsmacked because it's the complete opposite of what you see in the media okay go to the beach that's a perfect one because there's less hiding being done final piece i want to show you guys so if hair loss affects many men why is it so rarely represented why is it so rarely shown as normal short answer you cannot sell anything to a man who sees his male pattern baldness as normal and not in need of treatment point blank consequently Men who have hair loss see it as an isolating illness that requires specific treatments. And the key point here, lads, these treatments are only available from these pharmaceutical companies. Through images and texts that we use, hair loss was generally depicted as, as a lonely illness that made men unloved. And furthermore, hair loss only requires treatment for balding loners to be transformed into follicularly abundant men who are happy, successful, and surrounded by loved ones, okay? So you show the, the man losing his hair, life's over, no one's going to love me, I'm depressed as hell. All I need to change this is treatment for my male pattern baldness, and I am suddenly transformed. And where can I get these treatments? Of course, it's the pharmaceutical companies that set up these websites and fund these studies that help portray male pattern baldness as this hideous disease. Companies are mining our bodies for profit. Real. Very real. There is hope, but it's sadly it is the one that is least heard of. And that, my friends, is of course acceptance. Baldness is not an illness and does not have to be socially isolating nor devastating. Researchers have found that men who accepted their hair loss and let it show coped better than men who were trying to hide it. And the big conclusion here, guys, when hair loss is depicted as a problem so that more men cover their hair loss by using wigs, seeking transplants, staying indoors, we forget the alternative. Yeah, the more we're hiding this, lads, the more we are running scared, the more we're hiding away. Okay, we forget the alternative, but it is possible to not only look good, but also be happy, successful and loved without conforming to corporate dedicated appearance ideals. Compensation and avoidance were associated with high levels of distress. But, lads, acceptance was negatively related to distress.
I will put all of those articles down in the description box. And I just want to share this stuff with you. This is like some sort of psych op, right? Like how influential or how big of an impact or how successful it all is in selling you something or changing the way you think or impacting how you feel about yourself, your own self-esteem and things like that. And there needs to be a pushback on this continual driver of how like scary, depressing, disease ridden, life damaging hair loss is, you know, for something that, as we stated earlier, is very common, is very normal and physically does not cause you any pain whatsoever. You think, right, this hair loss, God, this sucks so much. This hurts. Yeah, it hurts. But where does that hurt really come from? And I think that we need to talk more about how to deal with hair loss from the psychological standpoint, understand it more. And from sources that aren't biased on selling you treatments. Let's come together as guys who are experiencing androgenic alopecia and have a good old chat. And I'm not here to get mugged off. I don't know about you. All right. I am not in this world, not in this planet, mate, to get mugged off.